أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده حمدا على كل حال حمدا في السراء وحمدا في الضراء وحمدا حين البأس وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله القاهر فوق عباده والله غالب على أمره ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وعزيزنا محمدا صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم عبد الله ورسوله وصفي الله وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين أما بعد أيها الإخوة والأخوات Dear brothers, dear sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and a blessed Jumu'ah to you and to yours. May Allah accept from you your approach to Him, your affinity with Him, and your dedication to Him. Last week, we spoke about uh, the issue of Karbala, Ashura. And this week we will continue uh, to shed more light on the depth of this development and this tragedy because this is not a one day issue. This is an issue that had its background its roots and its developments that led up to or culminated in Al Imam Al Hussein alayhi salawatullahi wa became a martyr. Let me preface my presentation and let me say that. <coughs> I may be forced to add another week to this sequence. I was only planning on uh, explaining things pertaining to Ashura in two <coughs> sessions or two weeks. It appears that it may extend into next week, but we'll see if we can finish this week. It would be fine if we can't. We are in no rush to explain what has been buried under four, almost 14 centuries of Sunni sectarianism and Shi'i sectarianism. If we can't mature and outlive <coughs> and part with this sectarian accumulation of misinformation, we're just going to continue to go in this vicious circle from year to year. <clears throat> so let's begin with an ayah, ayah 113 in Surah Hud, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ Don't the word tarkanu uh, can be captured with a few English words. In the first instance, wala tarkanu ila ladina zalamu would have the meaning of don't feel comfortable with oppressors or with those who are responsible for systematic injustice. Another 
meaning of wala tarkanu ila ladina zalamu don't rely upon those who are oppressors and injustice decision makers another meaning of wala tarkanu ila ladina zalamu is don't consider that you will have support from those who are oppressors and responsible for injustice policies and politics. Allah is telling us, this is not some uh, scholar here and there or some mujtahda. This is Allah Jalla wa ala speaking. وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا فَتَمَسَّكُمُ النَّارِ <clears throat> Because if you do so, if you find relief and comfort, if you find dependability and support from oppressors and الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا then you are going to experience you are going to be touched by, you are going to be incinerated by fire. <clears throat> uh, another ayat, uh, skip in the same surah, Surah Hud, skipping to 117, from 113 to 117. <laughs> It is not in the nature of your sustainer. Remember, we're here trying to deliver the meanings into English with the translator's license. It is not in the nature of your sustainer to destroy um, modernity or a social order or a civilization. وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى بِظُلْمٍ Doing them injustice while they, in this civilization or modernity, are doing the right things. <clears throat> Uh, 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 another way to understand these ayat is a, a kafir system will continue to function as long as it observes the necessities of justice and social justice. Theologically and theoretically, it could have any idea or philosophy or political platform, could have any of that, but as long as it observes social justice, it will continue to survive. The survivability of a political order depends on social justice. Likewise, if a political order is Islamic in theory and theology, but it violates the norms and the standards and the requirements of social justice, that type of setup shall be destroyed. That's when we begin to understand the depths of the meanings of these verses in the guiding Quran. <clears throat> now, if we take this as a reference point uh, in, and uh, place our mind within this meaning or these meanings, 
And then we, we transitioned back about 1400 years ago. We transitioned back to the time when Islamic governance swayed or deviated away from Allah and his prophet. This was done by the power grab of Muawiyah, the son of Abu Sufyan. One of the highlights of that power grab is the Battle of Safin. <clears throat> and the Prophet of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his, he foretold of future developments and one of them is what was going to unfold at the Battle of Safin. In a hadith, and this hadith is found in practically all the hadith, reliable hadith books, in, and there's no dispute about the hadith. The dispute comes in people trying to bend and uh, manipulate the meanings of this hadith to serve their own political agenda. So what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say? He said, Wayha ibn Sumayya taqtuluhu al-fi'atul baghiya Pity the son of Sumayya as he shall be killed by the belligerent camp by an aggressive group يَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَى الْجَنَّةِ وَيَدْعُونَهُ إِلَى النَّارِ Ibn Sumayya, meaning Ammar ibn Yasir, he is soliciting them, those who are trying to kill him, he is trying to uh, accommodate them to enter al-Jannah, paradise, at the same time, they are trying to have him enter the fire. <clears throat> this is in reference to, the Prophet said this in reference to what was going to happen in the future when Muawiyah and his uh, cohorts uh, they stole uh, Islamic governance. And the pro and the, uh, Ammar ibn Yasir said, and I'm going to quote Ammar, Ayyuhan Nas, O people, Wallevi nafsi biyada. This is another way of saying, by him who has my life in his hands, meaning, I swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَقَدْ قَاتَلْتُ تَحْتَ هَذِهِ الرَّايَةِ I have fought under this banner of Iman and Islam. مَا رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمْ With the Messenger of Allah, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. وَهَا أَنَا ذَا أُقَاتِلُ الْيَوْمَ تَحْتَهَا And here I am today, this is in reference when he was in Safin, and here I am today fighting for the cause of Allah, of course, under the same banner. These people, meaning the enemy camp, Muawiyah and his likes, these people came to this battlefield claiming that they are taking revenge for the blood of Uthman. لَقَدْ جَاءَ هَؤُلَاءِ يَزْعُمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يَطْلُبُونَ ثَأْرَ عُثْمَانِ فَلَا وَاللَّهِ مَا ذَاكَ قَصَدُوا No, by Allah, it is not that 
that they are intending, meaning they didn't come here to take revenge for the shedding of Uthman's blood. إِنَّمَا هُمْ أُنَاسٌ إِسْتَمْرَأُ الدُّنْيَا They are, and he's referring to Muawiyah's camp, they are people who feel comfortable with the materialism of this world. وَعَلِمُوا أَنَّ الْحَقَّ يَحُولُ بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ مَا يَمْرُغُونَ فِيهِ They know that truth and justice is a barrier between them and their materialistic worldly desires. بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ مَا مَرَغُوا فِيهِ مِنْ شَهَوَاتِهِمْ وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ Still, Ammar is speaking. I affirm to you by he who has my life in his hand. لو أنهم هزمونا حتى يبلغوا سعفات هجر If they were to defeat us all the way back to a remote area, it's called سعفات هجر, ما وهن يقيني My certitude would not diminish أننا على الحق وأنهم على الباطل That certitude that I have tells me that we stand for truth and justice and they, the camp of Muawiyah, stand for illegitimacy and batil. <clears throat> this should be, and remember, we're not taking some controversial hadith that is here and not found there and all of this. It's found in all the reliable books of hadith on both the Sunni and the Shi'i side. Now we move this uh, from the ayat and from uh, the hadith and from uh, the quote or the statement of Ammar ibn Yasir, meaning ibn Sumayya, <coughs> we move now to focus a little on al-Imam al-Husayn alayhi salam. Al-Imam al-Husayn was not a person who was looking for power. He was not power obsessed, power centric. He wasn't looking to uh, have some type of army or some type of treasury that would add to his prestige or to his status. The Imam al Hussein comes from the household of Allah's Prophet. And we honor an Imam al Hussein, we meaning committed Muslims. We honor him because. He is part of the Prophet. And it doesn't, he doesn't need any of, the, of these worldly mechanisms or worldly manipulations uh, to add to his stature. We love Al Imam Al Hussein without being polluted with Sunni Shi'i sectarianism. Any person can stand up who is a fervent, committed Muslim can stand up and say, I don't want anyone to tell me how I should love an Imam al Hussein. Unfortunately, sectarians, they want to define and they want to judge a person according to their own sectarianism in his heartfelt and mind thought out relationship with Al Imam Al Hussein. May Allah be pleased with him and may Allah's peace be upon him. Now uh, we're going to have to put some piece historical pieces together here. Uh, stay with me. Stay with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
when the uh, power grab began by Muawiyah, claiming that he is standing up for uh, the Shaheed Uthman, the third successor to Allah's Prophet, when Muawiyah broke rank with the central authority, Islamic authority in al Madina. He did so, and here's where we have to concentrate our attention. We did, he did so when all of the rest of the Muslim populations within that Islamic geography at that time had given bay'ah or allegiance to an Imam Ali. The people of Hijaz gave allegiance to al Imam Ali. The people of Yemen gave allegiance to Al Imam Ali. The people of the Arabian Peninsula uh, gave allegiance to Al Imam Ali. With all of the, the, the degrees of commitment that they had, the bottom line is they agreed that Al Imam Ali is their leader. The people of Egypt gave allegiance to Al Imam Ali. And the people of Iraq gave allegiance to Al Imam Ali. Everyone gave allegiance to Al Imam Ali. Everyone gave their bay'ah to Al Imam Ali. Except Muawiyah, who was ensconced in the Levant, the last power center of the Byzantines. Muawiyah's uh, position was reinforced by his relationship with the Byzantines. It's not that he had popularity all over the Muslim world. It's that he had support, foreign support, oppressive support from those who are outside of the Islamic realm. And therefore, he embarked on the battle of Al Jamal and the battle of Safin against the consensual Islamic authority in Al Madina Al Munawwara, the illuminous city of the Prophet. When Al Imam Ali alayhi salam, was stabbed to death in his expiring uh, moments in this world, he summoned his two sons, Imam al-Hasan and Imam al Hussein, And he told them, Ittaqiya Allah, both of you stand in reverence and in awe of Allah's power and authority. وَلَا تَبْغِيَا الدُّنْيَا Do not be seekers of this world and all of the attractions and entrapments of this world. وَإِنْ بَغَتْكُمَا Even if this world is seeking you out, وَفْعَلَا الْخَيْرِ Do what is good, what is prosperous, and what is considered to be beneficial. Ifala al Khair Wakuna Livalimina Khasma. Both of you maintain a position of opposition and antagonism towards oppressors and injustice decision makers. Walil Mavlumi Auna. And both of you be supportive of those who are victimized, those who are dealt injustice, those who are oppressed. 
Now we, uh, going through the pages of history, we realize that this power grab of Muawiyah, he's not uh, a Sahabi like some people, uh, the sectarian Sunnis will say, he's not a Sahabi. He is a Taliq. Now, let me explain this. When the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his forever, when he liberated Mecca in the last years of his life, those who fought against him, those who opposed him, those who persecuted him, for over 20 years were now captives of war. The Prophet liberated Mecca and those people who were against him for those previous 20 years or so were now at his quote-unquote disposal. The Prophet had the power, he had the authority. They lost because now Mecca was militarily liberated, the Prophet asks them, ما تظنون أني فاعل بكم? What do you think I am going to do with you now? قالوا أخ كريم وابن أخ كريم. They said, but you are a brother and a nephew of ours. This is one of those statements that is trying to tap on the gentle heart of the Prophet. The Prophet responded, You may go now, you are tulaqa. You are released from the consequences of what you did in the past 20 years. You are discharged from the penalty that is due to you. The Prophet did not say, remember among them, these tulaqa were Banu Umayyah, the core of those who stood the 20 years of animosity towards the Prophet and the Muhajireen and the Ansar. Notice that the Prophet did not say, Antum Ashabi. So Muawiyah was in that crowd. If Muawiyah was a Sahabi, the Prophet would have said, Antum Ashabi. That wasn't the case. So when the power grab took place by a taliq Muawiyah, not a sahabi Muawiyah, a taliq Muawiyah, when that took place and there was the potential of a expanding and self-destructive civil war between those who were with Al-Imam Al-Hasan now, because Al-Imam Ali passed away, and the bay'ah was given to his son, Al-Imam Al-Hasan. And Al-Imam Al-Hasan realized that if this is going to continue, the majority of the Muslims Further yet, the overwhelming majority of the Muslims are going to kill themselves. So he reached an agreement with Al-Taliq Muawiyah that Muawiyah would rule to save the Muslim, to save potentially uh, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Muslim lives. But that is conditioned upon when Muawiyah dies, Muawiyah agrees that governance will return to the Muslim populace via the Shura process to decide 
who their leader is going to be. And unfortunately, uh, as anyone who reads history and knows history realizes, that did not happen. He reneged on his word. Uh, and those, and, and this has some, unfortunately, uh, we're going to have to extend this uh, explanation of Islamic history that is um, either hijacked by some sectarians or is buried six feet under by other sectarians or monopolized by another type of sectarians, uh, we're going to have to take a, a closer look. We're going to have to scrutinize this history with a mind and a heart that belong to Allah Azza wa Jal and belong to His Prophet and those who are with His Prophet and with Him. Uh, so I, I foresee that probably this is going to extend another session or two because I just scratched the surface right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all and may this yearly event of Ashura and Karbala be liberated from Shi'i sectarians and from Sunni sectarians so that we can resume our responsibilities to answer to Allah and His Prophet. والله سبحانه وتعالى يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته